This video is sponsored by Temu. So I recently had a one-to-one -one with a mentee and she asked me a really good question. What if you were to speak to your younger self as a junior developer? What would you tell him? How would you mentor him? And what if you were to be brutally honest? And then I told her, damn, this would make a good video. The first thing I would tell myself is this, you are not a great developer. Damn. You know how everyone wants to be an amazing developer and kind of assumes you're good after finishing a couple tutorials. Well, let me tell you something, you're not. <laughs> you are terrible and that's totally fine. And as soon as you accept that you will fail on a daily basis, that every day you try to build something, you will not know what you're doing, the sooner you'll actually start becoming a great developer. Now, let me explain to you exactly what I mean. As someone who just got their first job in tech or someone who's trying to get their first job in tech, it's very important that you understand that you will encounter things that you don't know every single day. And it's vitally important to also understand that this is normal. Literally, every 10X developer, senior developer, staff engineer, principal, software engineering manager that you've ever met has gone through this. And so it's normal to understand things you don't know to the point that even when you are considered the best engineer at the job, and whenever that happens, that you also understand that that will still happen, that you'll still not understand the things that you think you should know or people expect you to know. This is normal. Just because you do not know something does not mean that you are not qualified. But by accepting you don't know something means that then you are now in the process of becoming qualified or more qualified for the next role or for your current role. And so it's really important to understand that as a, as a junior developer, aspiring developer, the more you fail, the better you will become. The more things that you accept you don't understand, the more things you will understand as you put an effort to understand it. And so why is this so important? Because I remember in the past for me, when I got my first tech job, I thought I was supposed to know everything. I thought that I need to be a pretender first, right? That I needed to, to, to act like a senior developer in order to become a senior developer. No, not at all. Because number one, when they interviewed you in the first place, they know what you know and they know what you don't know. That's why there's a rigorous technical interview process. But when I was first a developer, when I got my first job, but even aspiring, but really more when I was a junior developer at this time, I, I, I kept thinking that I should know everything and act like it, but this actually stopped me and prevented me from asking for help. And as a result, I got analysis paralysis where when I should have been growing like this, I was really just growing like this, staying stagnant or taking longer than I should have to actually learn. I remember thinking that if I shared I don't know something, I don't know X, I don't know Y, it will prove that I'm not a real developer. Like I, 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 I should know this, like I should know that. But this is imposter syndrome at its finest, and guess what? It can destroy your career if you let this continue to develop and not change. So number one, you are not a great developer. You actually suck. But now it's your job to not suck anymore and get better, and how do you do that? By building, by learning, accepting failure, and enjoying failing and not knowing things and asking for help so you can improve. Pride must be checked at the door in order for you to become the best developer possible. Number two. Second thing I tell myself, it's okay to chase the money. And I tell people this, it's okay to learn code and to become a developer for the money. But don't forget to also chase what you love. Right? So in tech, there are so many different roles that you can have, so many different jobs. For example, there's back-end development, there's front-end development, there's full stack, mobile development, Android, iOS, there's data engineering, there's data analysts, there's machine learning, there's uh, computer vision for self-driving cars, you name it. There's so many different roles you can be, but don't make the mistake that I made, Chris, where, okay, you're jumping in salaries, you went from, let's say, 80K to over 160K just like that overnight, amazing. But do not chase a role just because it will pay you more. You will hate it, Chris. You will burn out and effectively push yourself out of the tech industry if you do this. And what do I mean is this? In my last tech job where I was laid off, I joined that job for the money. I did not like that. I did not believe, not that I didn't believe it. I didn't like the technology they were working with. It was all back end. I'm a front end developer. I had a role where they were going to pay me 190K a year to be a JavaScript developer. 
I know JavaScript. JavaScript's easy for me. Front-end development's easy for me. And I rejected that job to join this back-end company to become a back-end developer where I have to study all night, study all weekend just to keep up. When if I stayed in a role that I already knew and I already loved, it would have been easy for me and I would have never burned out. And, and effectively, what happened is I hated that job so much because I chased the money over what I already know what I'm good at and something I already enjoy doing, which is front-end development. So don't make that mistake. When you, if, when you find something that you love in tech, stick to it. If you get bored, then move to something new. But if you love front-end development, doesn't mean you have to necessarily move to AI just because it's blowing up. I, I remember when AI first started popping with OpenAI, ChatGPT, a lot of us were thinking it's going to replace us. It's been, a, what, over a year now, a year and a half? I don't see that happening anytime soon. Not one developer that I've been speaking with is afraid of AI, not one person. Actually, AI has been making our lives easier and helping us be more productive and look more productive to our engineering managers, right? So if you like front-end development, stick to it. Don't join AI just because of the money. Don't join machine learning. Don't join back-end. Don't become a full-stack developer just for the money. Do it because you enjoy it. And if you want to learn it and you enjoy what you're learning, a new technology, a new particular future role for you, then that's great. Because if you like what you do, that's the fastest way to become a 10X developer. Now, talking about 10X developers, one of the ways that we actually do become that is through, again, like I mentioned, failures. And one of the things that it does teach us is about the importance of protecting user data. And this principle is why I absolutely respect what Temu is doing in the e-commerce space. They're not just about selling products, they're also about ensuring every purchase is wrapped in layers of security by adhering to the PCI DSS standards. Temu encrypts customer data so it remains confidential. With two-factor authentication, Temu now adds an extra checkpoint, a verification step where we can liken to debugging our code before a launch. It's always about making sure that everything is in order before moving forward with your purchase on Temu. But security isn't just about technicalities, it's also about transparency and trust. And that's why Temu's partnership with HackerOne is so freaking significant, everyone. It shows that their commitment to transparency, their commitment to continuous improvement, which is similar to how we iterate our code, enhancing with every single code of you at the job will make us better at what we're doing. They're not just a marketplace, they're a secure space where you can shop with the confidence that your data is as diligently protected as the projects we pour our hearts whenever we start coding and building web apps. Okay, so now let's get back into the video. The third thing I tell myself, extremely important, and we all know this, right? We, we all know how important this is and how true this is, but you don't really realize it until it's too late. This happens to a lot of people or when you are worried about layoffs. So this is point number three, which is you are freaking replaceable. No matter how long you've been in tech, no matter how many green check boxes you have on your GitHub account, no matter how many leak code questions you solved, you are replaceable. There will always be someone better than you. Why am I mentioning this? Because the moment you think that you are not replaceable will be the moment that you will begin losing your footing and fall back. The moment that you think that you're not replaceable, the moment that you stop learning, the moment you stop improving, the moment that you stop focusing on things on your job that'll bring the company the most value and only do what people tell you. The moment that you think that you're not replaceable is the moment you continue cruising and you can lose your job. This is very important because everyone, please understand this field is as competitive as it gets. I was making $200,000 a year, right? How many people in the world or in this country, in the USA, wants to make $200,000 a year? The average salary now is like, what, $60,000, $70,000 a year? How many people in this country of what, 200, 300 million people, whatever the num number is, want to make two hundred k a year? And how many people actually do that? The top 10%, maybe 5% in the country make this. That's it. 90% of the USA would want this salary. And wh what am I trying to say is, don't you think these people, there are people out there out of the other 90% of this population that is willing to do whatever it takes to get your job. We're all replaceable. So make sure you always have your guard up. Make sure you're performing your best because you never know, especially in this economy. Last but not least, number four is this, everyone. I think it's really important, actually. I would tell myself, take your time. Take your freaking time. Play for the long 
game. I think a mistake that a lot of us make is that we need to learn everything right away, which is good because it's competitive. But yo, we'll be learning code. We'll be learning new technologies for the rest of our careers. Software engineers will continue learning on the weekends and the evenings. Don't try to, don't think that you need to know everything right away. Don't rush trying to learn everything right away. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to be the very best right away. Just learn. Of course, go above and beyond, but don't go too hard on yourself. Don't push yourself too much because what can that lead to is anxiety. That can lead to depression. That can lead to burnout. I think something that I could have done better in my career is push myself to learn, but more than anything is not just learn as many things as possible, but learn things well. Learn the nuances of the technology. Don't learn too fast where you're going crazy and losing sleep, but learn things well, and I can guarantee you, you will do very well in this industry. These are the four things that I would tell myself to be as brutally honest as possible to make sure that I do succeed in this career and have a long, successful career paying me a hell of a lot of freaking money. Anyway, I hope y'all like this video. If there's anything else y'all wanna add, let me know. Anything I missed, let me know.